important thing. Fuel. It's a necessity. All right, guys, I made it literally 10 minutes. I have to tell you guys where we're going. We're going to a ghost town. It's gonna be so sick. Guys, we made it. This is the ghost town. Left is towards the church. Mm. Guys, behind me right here is one of the old Aurora places. And let me get up my phone because I I got some some news about this place. Now this place was apparently knocked down back in the Civil War. And let's see, it's right here. This is a hot spot in Georgia, was said to be one of the first places where gold was discovered. Mining operations was set in the town and ended up thriving with more than 20 billion, or sorry, 20 million dollars in gold mine. Yet eventually the gold wasn't being mined as much, so it, as it used to, the, the Auraria quickly turned into a ghost town. Now that's pretty much all I, I know about it. This is one of the buildings, so we'll go up and we'll see what's up with inside. I mean, I don't think we can go inside, but we can look through this little gated window. Let me turn on this flashlight. It doesn't actually help at all. But as you guys can see, there's a lot of uh, old stuff in here, old bottles. So I'm gonna walk over to this one maybe I don't know that one actually looks like there's people inside of it I'm not gonna go over to that one it looks like uh, people are actually there but this place looks like it's locked down look at this old coca-cola dispenser guys wow that's from the dinosaur age you think so? It's plugged in. Oh, it is. I think. <laughs> there's actually any uh, Coca-Cola inside of it. I don't think so. Let's go look around the sides really quick. Eh. If we aren't, they'll tell us to leave. We'll just say we're sorry. Um, that door is not even on the hinges. Some skizzers. Wow, old VHS tapes. I haven't seen those for a while. Oh yeah, see, look, that door is open. Uh, I kind of want to go talk to him. See what's up about this place. I'm kind of tempted to knock on the door. Doesn't really look like much. Yeah, let's go knock on the front door. This door is open, but yeah, that's that's a little sketchy. <laughs> oh my god, it is freaking cold out here. Whoa. Looks like there's an old barn over there. I'm going to check that out. I'm not sure somebody lives here. I'm just gonna go to the other window or the other door. I'm just gonna knock on the other door. It'll be okay. I got the camera rolling. I ain't gonna die. <laughs> A 
Hello? Somebody obviously lives here. Hello? It doesn't make sense. I want to get inside of here. <laughs> I want to look around inside. I have no idea. I don't know why that door is open. Huh, what, what, what is this? Yeah, I know. Where's the pockets for this thing? Oh, right here. So we're gonna go. Oh, we're gonna go and look at the uh, historical landmarker right here. Look both ways before crossing, kids. Here we go, more information. Arroyo Gold in 1832, the scene of Georgia's first gold rush was named by John Callahan, owner of a nearby mine worked by Callahan real or Callahan slaves. Lonega? The Lonega were the two real gold towns in the US before 1849. Between 1829 and 1839, about $20, 000, $20 million of gold was mined in Georgia's Cherokee country from Aurora. In 1858, the Russell boys, led by Green Russell, went west and established another Aurora near the mouth of Cherry Creek that later became Denver, Colorado. Cherry Creek was... Cherry, Cherry Creek that later became yeah. Green Russell uncovered a fabulous load called Russell Gulch near which was built Central City richest square mile on earth I, I don't know I don't know this doesn't really give us any information about anything nope. hmm. yeah. let's go check out this barn real quick House. Possibly. Woo, that car scared me. Huh? That car scared me. <laughs> yeah, you can't just walk over there, dude. That's no problem. <laughs> Damn. Take a good look at it from here, then. I guess. What do we do now? I guess go into Delonaga. Two. Delonaga. What's in Delonaga? That's where all the mines and stuff are. Ooh, mines. So, this place was actually pretty cool. It was pretty neat inside of that building. I don't know how much you guys could see. Um, the flashlight wasn't entirely that bright to be able to see inside. But there should have been enough light for you guys to see at least a little bit of it. And nobody answered that door. And the, the door was open and I knocked on the front and the back and said hello get you guys heard so I mean like nobody came so I don't, I don't know what's going on there but we're going to go find some mines and hopefully we can have better luck with that hopefully <laughs> the downtown Delonaga the scenery here is just beautiful bro I love these places. Turn left on Choice Avenue, then turn left. We need to uh, make a stop at Wendy's because food is also a necessity.
like a month earlier all these trees would be changing color so <laughs> Wendy's baconator Here we are guys consolidated gold mines Right now we're gonna go pan for gold and then in about 19 minutes is when we're gonna go get some rubies and emeralds and whatever else we can find. You gotta watch this video and learn how to pan for gold first. So. What that does is gold is heavier. That puts all of the gold uh, near the bottom. Pan. What you want to do is while you're shaking your gold pan, gently tilt that gold pan a little bit away from you and work that sand up to that red line, but not past it. You do not want to lose any sand while you're above the water. Now after about five or six shakes, shaking to that red line, you want to stop shaking. And with both hands, gently take that gold pan and push it straight down in the water and straight back up. And you'll see a little bit of sand leave the gold pan. Alright guys, let's do some gold pan. Huh? So Wayne's still working on his bowl. I kind of cheated because my hand started hurting. But there's my bowl. I believe that's a handful. Should I just go take it up to him? Yeah. Alright, let's do this. Mine was kind of bad, but he gave me this little piece of gold. He's got his gold. <laughs> Happy man. We're rich. All right, guys. So in about four minutes, we are on the purple tour to go find rubies and a little bit of emeralds. We're taking a tour of the mine first. Yeah, and a tour of the mine. So yeah. Pretty sure we're going in here. Looks pretty mysterious. All of them, grab a seat on one of those chairs and we'll get started. Alright. 
entering the mine right now. in the video it's 20 some odd feet across that's where it was to kind of put in perspective you can see what we're talking about at one point in history there was a big hunk of white rock started about where i'm standing and run over to that dead end where those holes are on the top and bottom of that back wall went from the wall in front of me to the wall behind me and from the rock that connects the walls all the way down to what is now the ground this whole big open area is one big seam of white rock that happened to have gold in it had a lot of gold in it as a good average, good rule of thumb, if you process out 2,000 pounds of that kind of rock and check it for gold, if you're lucky, there's even gold there for you to find, and you make no mistakes in the mining process, you might walk away with half an ounce of gold per ton of rock you go through. Give you a visual, a little plastic tube and put your gold in the day, that's a one ounce tube. Process out 2,000 pounds of rock, you might fill it up halfway, maybe. Okay, back in the day mining this particular vein, they carted out over 54 pounds of gold in 12 hours with hand tools and dynamite. No way, no how to that many tons of rock in that short a period of time. It's not possible. Go to show you how much gold was in a relatively small space while at the same time being the biggest hunk of it mankind's ever found. Give the miners back then something to brag about. Hey, y'all look at us. Our mine is better than any mine you ever heard of because we got the Knight's Vein. It was the glory of the mine. Now it's a big old hole. There goes the name Glory Hole. As we head down, take your time on the stairs, grab on the handrails good, talk about what you had as you come by. If you brought a camera, a cell phone, or a GoPro, take pictures, videos, whatever. We don't particularly care. <laughs> now, if you put that on YouTube and or some other internet media thing, whatever, Tag you're making kind of money on that, I get 10%. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your credit card, Mr. You think I'm kidding, look it up. <laughs> you can make a check out of mine or JD. They know who I am, <laughs> This man's got jokes. What's down there? Where we come up. Oh. All right. Sure. Something like that. <laughs> So that watch up in that wall over there. It's a really good example of a gold-bearing vein of a white quartz rock. In case you've never seen it before, it's what it looks like. Just the white stuff you see exposed right now contains somewhere in the neighborhood, right around, give or take, $300,000 worth of gold. Which basically screams the question, if there's $300,000 of gold in the wall, and we own the wall, and we call ourselves gold miners, why is it in the wall? Why are we not mine that out? Couldn't we use an extra $300,000? Y'all see what I'm wearing today, right? You figure I could use $300,000? The right. reason we don't touch it is because the kind of gold is there. Each piece of gold in that rock is roughly the same size as a grain of flour. Anybody here ever made homemade biscuits before? Yeah, we're making some biscuits right now. Grab your bag of flour, open it up, get you a magnifying glass, pair of tweezers, dig out one grain of flour. That's what we're talking about. Trapped inside of literal solid rock. So your $300,000 question is not where is the gold. You know where it is. It's in the white stuff. The question is how do you get it out. Back in the old days, they find a vein like so, drill a bunch of holes in the wall, fill it with dynamite, and blow it up. Hang on a minute. Y'all figure I look qualified to even look at that much dynamite? Okay, that's reason number one is in the wall. Let's <laughs> say we blew it up. We got these giant boulders rock right on the ground, little specks of gold stuck in there. Somebody's got to heft them boulders up, put them in an ore cart, send them back up top, get the gold out. Do y'all see me lifting any boulders anytime soon? Okay, that's reason number two. So we got to the bug That's when the fun part starts. Somebody's got to beat that rock into a powder and treat it with all kinds of nasty chemicals to get the gold out. Just to name a half a dozen, I'm talking about they used to use mercury, arsenic, cyanide, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, chlorine gas, bad news stuff to pull the gold out the rock. So cool, we got the gold out, but it's covered in nasty chemicals. So what we're gonna do is put it in a big metal pot, light a fire under that pot, burn off the bad news stuff, and leave behind the good clean gold. Y'all figure that's, you know, safe, 
no, legal no, EPA certified. Yeah, we would go to prison for doing that. That's why it's in the wall. There's no which ways yet. 120 years later, even we're talking about getting that kind of gold out. They're working on some science. There may be some breakthroughs coming down the road. We don't typically care. It's not worth talking about for us because it's just too much work. As we head down, take your time on the stairs. Grab on the handrails. Good. Taller folk, that rock right there. Very well known, very famous rock called the Wishing Rock. A lot of folk conk your head right about there and wish they hadn't. So you the left, <laughs> look, 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 look up that for a reason. <laughs> Wish and rock. <laughs> well, local legend says if you, hear, if you hit your head hard enough to see stars and make a wish for the stars go away, the wish will come true. That's why it's called the wish and rock. I do not recommend trying that, but that's what I'm going to I have a question. Why can't we go in the keep out room? Well, because it's about that top. And it's nothing to see. It's an old, old loading bay on. They used to back the war carts in here. Well, ask the glory hole. The rock would fall down into the war carts. They'd pull the cart sword and blast it again. So you don't have to pick up as much rock. Oh. So it's literally a dead end parking lot. I know there's no which way you can talking about. You got to get where you can see this big tap on this rock wall. If you can't see through me, you're welcome to scoot down some. We're going to be looking right here. Now, here's the consolidated gold mine. In case you haven't figured it out yet, we are no longer active producing gold mine. Nobody who works here today is currently drilling holes in the ground looking for gold. We don't do that anymore for the reasons listed up there. However, left behind in the old days, we have two things. Number one, the tunnels miners made back in the old days. And two, the tools they used to make those tunnels. This is the more important tool we have. It goes by one of two names. Some people call it a hand steel, some people call it a star bit, depends on who you talk to. I call it a hand steel because the miners call it that, use it with their hands, and it's made out of guess what? There you go. Look on the business, check around a lowercase t or a plus sign or a four pointed star, why well, it's called a star bit. The name is not super important, but the history is. Every miner in the 1840s, this is in then, up into the late 1980s, so 140 year window, every miner in the country at some point in their career used this style of drill bit or a bigger version thereof. Remember that big bang we just talked about? We're going to grab it, cut it, and paste it, put it right here. We're going to pretend I just developed a brand new, totally safe way to extract flower gold out of quartz. No nasty chemicals involved. You still need holes in the wall and dynamite. Put that one with the hole in the wall, grab you a hammer, looks like so, grab hold of the drill bit, and hit it. Realistically, that's solid granite bedrock. I'm swinging at it one handed with a two pound hammer. What y'all figure I'm accomplishing? Yeah. Thanks, that big fella. It's fun. Plus, sign is so important. No matter how strong you are or not, when you grab it and hit it, physics says you're going to crush some of the rock inside that hole to a very fine dust. That dust has a tendency to build up in the teeth of that four point star design. So, this is the hole in the wall. This is a drill that hit it 8, 10, 12 times. You get some dust in there. Grab it and spin it. You're going to move that dust and powder around. So, basically, what you're doing is making your own sandpaper and then sanding a hole in granite bedrock. These guys will literally do this in this pace with this much effort, this much energy for 12 hours a day. At the end of your 12 hour day, you get paid one dollar. Go home, get a good meal, a good night's sleep. Come back the next day, do it again. Your average gold miner can get one hole in that wall about as deep as I am tall for 12 hour shift. I need 30 holes in that wall as deep as I am tall for we see a liquid diamond. Once you got 30 holes in the wall, we're going to pack it all full of explosives and blow it up at the same time. Good job. Now we got a six foot of rock pickup, put in more carts, send out, get the gold out of it, and six new foot of tunnels. Do it again. And again, again, the next six years. Provided you have enough time, manpower, dynamite, you'll make roughly four and a half miles a ton. That's your welcome to a portion of the day. That's how about all of the things by repeating this process over and over and over again. Hmm. Well, now, time out. We just covered like this much information in history and about this much time. I felt really fast with the heavy stuff in the draw. I've had a lot of caffeine today, and I know that it's late in the day. If y'all have any questions now, be a good time to let me know. <laughs> so how many guys could be working here to see what's going In this particular section you're going to look at today, Careful now, the Loch Ness Monster's cousin, his name is Chris, he lives down there, he may jump at you. <laughs> now, that is what we refer to as the deep tunnel or the connection shaft, because it connects down to the lower levels of mine to go further and deeper underground. Important question, I was kind of anticipating nobody asked me back then. I just told y'all we made four and a half miles of tunnel back in the day, and then we were walking through a portion of that tunnel today. Open up the floor for questions, nobody had any questions. Here's the question I would have been screaming. 
about how far we're fixing to walk. Like, the next four and a half miles of possible hiking terrain, if we got to go two miles in, two miles out, three miles in, three miles out, what are we doing? Today, y'all going to see about a quarter mile worth of tunnel in, quarter mile worth of tunnel out. That's it. For a bunch of reasons. Reason number one, I'm y'all's tour guide, and there is no way I'm hiking some nine miles round trip in 45 minutes talking this fast and breathing. Not going to happen. Reason number two, that's the rest of the mine. You want to go look at it, be my guest. You're going to hit a problem in about 50 yards. Anybody see it? Water? Yeah, it's a slap flooded full of water. To get down there, we're going to need some scuba gear. Guess who is present today and is not scuba certified? <laughs> okay, so get out there by yourself. Good luck. Now, back in the old days, it wasn't slap full of water. Back in the old days, we, we hired 12 year old kids running this pump here. Suck water uphill against gravity, push water through the pump, through a hose to a barrel. Have a hose going from that barrel to the next pump to the next barrel, and relay pump that water out 24 hours a day, six days a week. Then 12 year old kids made a nickel for 12 hours they worked. Here's the thing, we can't have 12 year old kids no more. It's illegal. Thanks to this stupid thing called child labor laws. Y'all heard that? <laughs> we tried that. We ended up having this big, lag, big, long, nasty court fight with Georgia. We were in, in and out of court. We had lawyers. It was gross. That's when we're not doing it now. Now, say somebody here was just a very nice, charitable person wanted to give us a big old electric pump and pay our power bill for the next year. Could we pump the water up and look at the rest of the mine? Sure. What's the point? You got four and a half miles of over the exact same guys, the exact same tools, the exact same techniques over four, over six years. There's nothing no different down there than what's up here. We're not missing them by not going down there. Only major difference is the presence of gold. We figure this company removed 20% of the gold in this mountain of tank, meaning 80% of it is still down there. So if they found 54 pounds of gold in 12 hours right up there, and 80% of the original total is still right down there, why are we not mining for gold this very second? I'm not qualified to use dynamite. That's reason number one. I'm not allowed to use mercury, arsenic, cyanide, bad news, chemicals to get the gold out of the courts anyway. It's illegal to hire 12 year old kids to run the pump. But number four, it's our location. It's where we're at. Right now, you're technically inside one gold mine, 84 feet beneath another gold mine. Did y'all know that? Yeah, biggest gold mine in the country right on top of you right now. It's called Walmart. <laughs> All right, so let's give Miner JD half a ton of dynamite to him down in the gold mine. That ends exactly one way. Guess where Walmart's going to end up? Down here. Down here with us, which is cool. We have access to their vault. We have all the peanut butter and bread. We have all the camping equipment we need. We have a great time while they're digging us out. Problem. Y'all got any friends, family, church family, people that like you, might dig you out of the gold mine? I'm not willing to bet on that. But let's say we had some. My mama come dig us out for sure. Guess where the only place to buy a shovel in this whole county is? Walmart. That's why we ain't doing this. So you want to get a good look, go ahead, but then we're going this way. <laughs> Five foot five. I'm five foot ten. Take five inches off me. We're about yay tall. 
He might weigh 130 pounds soaking wet. You want a 130-pound 5 foot 5 guy to run a 7-foot tall 140-pound machine with compressed air pushing against him for 12 hours. <laughs> and the numbers don't add up, okay? Only way this thing got run is a two-pounder job back in 1900. Somebody's got to hold it steady. The other guy's going to squat down, throw this over the front of his shoulder, this on the back of his shoulder. He's going to squat press 140 pounds of dead weight to seal with compressed air pushing against him, beating rock into a power with a blunt object. Crazy hard job. Now, here's the fun thing. Y'all figure gravity still works down here? Uh-huh. So we've beaten rock and some powder. That powder's going to magically float up in the air nice and safe for us, right? Uh-huh. Now, I saw it down where I'm trying to send and breathe this thing over my shoulder. Absolutely not a good tool. Why are we talking about it? You go to what that did. Whenever you have a bad day or a bad day at school, you come home from back and wherever your bad day was, and you slam the door to your house. Because your house is falling apart. There's nails on that house together, I'm betting you. I'm also betting you got to build your house, use a brad carry to drive the nails into the pores, hold that house together. That's the grandpa's the brad carry. Maybe you turn the sink on, wash your hands, reach your water works. Somebody paid the water bill this month, and last February, the water line was frozen and busted. Somebody had a jackhammer come through to fix your water line. That's the grandpa the jackhammer. 90% of how we live our lives today in this country, I can tie to this too. It's a very important piece of history. It's not the easiest job we ever come up with. Now, for 250 a day, you start working this job. If you want 250 a day, you just let me know how you start from March 10 a.m. That's how we lose my minimum wage. <laughs> well, have you ever been to the Arnica before? No. Th that law is only what you get caught with. Ah. <laughs> I see. Then plenty of kids were here for two years before we got busted. All right. <laughs> hey, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> That's right, Wayne. <laughs> I need to give me some more wood shots. You guys can just walk through this. <laughs> I think we probably got some skills around here. Dumped off in the wrong section, the wrong way to get shot at. Oh, I Gold mine has one more thing makes them a big deal as far as history goes. Y'all can sit down if you want to. The one thing makes them a big deal. They were the absolute first anything underground to get electric light. Think about the time frame here. They started this company in 1898, started drilling and blasting in 1900. In 1900, where was this country as far as electricity goes? Not even, right? We figured out to take a kite and tie a key to it, fought the thunderstorm, we struck by lightning. That's about it, okay? In 1900, Thomas Edison invented his light bulb about eight years before this mine opened, which means the electric light bulb has been invented. But it was invented in New York, New York. I want you to imagine you're in 1900 in New York City. You just bought one glass light bulb. I want you to get it to Dahlonega, Georgia. There ain't no railroads coming to Dahlonega. There ain't no cars and trucks to drive. You want to ride a horse down the Appalachian Mountain chain to Dahlonega, Georgia with a glass light bulb. Is your glass light bulb going to survive that trip? <laughs> no. Let's say you got it here. Are you going to sell it for dirt cheap? No. Nope. Because you just brought it all that long way, you want a nice pretty penny for it. That's how it was. People in Delonica had basically never heard of electricity when this gold mine came to town. Now when they came to town, the reason they had to have electric lighting, think about this. They're going to dig this big old hole in the ground looking for the shiny yellow metal we call gold. They only need a whole lot of people to work here. We can either A, hire experienced miners from other mines and bring them to Delonica and have them work for us, which is going to be expensive. Or we can hire the locals. Who are your locals in 1900? Well, no, we, we had some white folk here. They had, they had literally corn farmers, cattle farmers, and moonshiners. That's it for all of 1900 in Delonica. So when they got here, they said, well, let's just take a bunch of corn farmers, cattle farmers, and moonshiners, stick them in a hole in the ground, in the dark, with nitroglycerin dynamite and zero training. How long before somebody gets killed? That's when we had to build some lights, okay? So when they built lights here, they did. They got lights working, but 
they were still very primitive and very new, had a lot of issues. As their tunnels got longer and longer, their copper wires got longer and longer. And as they did, their bulbs kept getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because they were using DC power at this point. Second off, they're wired on a series circuit. It means they're overgrown Christmas tree lights. If these are Christmas tree lights and I pop that bulb, how many lights still work? Mm -hmm. For four miles of tunnel, 20 stories below the ground with corn farmers, cattle farmers, moonshiners, and dynamite. Great. Anybody want to work there for a day? Nope. Good. I do not have a time machine. I can't take you back and let you work there for a day. What I do have is a kill box. Turn the lights off in this tunnel. You want to see the dark miners had to work in? Yes. Look right here. You don't like the dark. Dark bothers you, dark scares you. You've got two ideas. Idea one, close your eyes. You'll never know you're in the dark. I've done it for years. It works great. You have no idea the lights are off. Idea two, look at that way. The lights in the main tunnel stay on down there. I'm going to cut these off in three, two, one. Here we go. Cool. This is the work environment, y'all. This is not the take a nap, have a lunch break environment. This is the actually go to work environment. So I want you to pretend right now that you grab a hammer and start drilling a hole in the wall. Okay? You can't even see you drilled it. Imagine today is the day we're going to blow some dynamite up. This wall back here has got holes drilled in it. Let's pretend that I'm going to pack that wall with 200 pounds of nitroglycerin dynamite. Run a fuse out of each hole. Get the end of the fuses, zip tie them together, and light the fuse. By the time it starts sparking, new guy in 36 breaks the light bulb. we got to get out. <laughs> okay? Anybody want that job? Yeah, no. Good, good, good. We work higher in that position anyway. That's my brother's position. We're going on this one. We want to pick out and we'll head back to the top. This thing right here is without a doubt the coolest thing anyone can saw that he gold mine today, and the coolest thing I've seen in my entire life as far as mechanical engineering goes. This is what's called a drifter drill. D R I F T E R drifter drill. It's basically the stoke drill version 2.0. All the problems we have with the stoke drill get fixed with this model. For example, do y'all figure I gotta pick that one up to use it? That's a great problem solver right there. Second off, this point horizontal. I want you to imagine somebody's five inches shorter than me and weighs a lot less than me. Grabbing a stoke drill, throwing it over their shoulder, trying to keep it level, and then driving it into bedrock with compressed air, pushing against them. As far as I'm going to work, that's what else takes care of it. All you got to do is turn it on and screw the handle in. You can literally run it with one hand. Very easy to operate. Now, that'd be great if all it did was what we just discussed. That'd be great. Not all it does. Loose the nuts and bolts here, this thing will pivot like so and like so at the same time. So you can drift it on whatever angle you want to go to with it. Loose the nuts and bolts on the back, this thing will drop, it'll raise up, it'll spin around this center pole, goes literally anywhere you want on four planes. So let's say we're going to rock it up, drill a hole straight up, and replace the stoke drill all in one machine. Good idea. This one comes with water valves. The air valve turns it on. Water valve lets water flow through the machine through the hollow drill bit into the hole you're drilling. So as you speak rock into a powder, dust is falling down here in the it. Not even spread with water. Water and dirt makes mud. Mud runs out of the wall, gets you in the machine nasty fied, but you can't breathe mud. It's a whole lot safer on your operator. Reason this particular one is so cool is because of its story. This was made in 1904, brought here in 04, and used in 1906. 1906 consolidated goes bankrupt. They shut down. Last thing any mine does when they shut down is collapse their tunnels. If you leave your tunnels open, it won't be two weeks before your locals are looking for whatever you were mining for. They're stealing your tools, getting lost in your tunnels. They find them down like you forgot about blowing their hand off with it. You always collapse your tunnels. So they did. Caused the cave in about 65 yards that way. Everybody here that day walked out the mine we were going to go today. Caused the cave in up on that side of the mine and sealed this place off on both sides. Leaving a waterfall in the middle. Pumping water in every second, every minute, every day with nowhere to go because of the cave in. The whole place you got right now flooded from the floor to the ceiling and stayed that way for the next 85 years. Fast forward 85 years. Current property owner buys the property. Goes on that side of the property, the bobcat, the toe strap, wraps up a couple of rocks, starts pulling out the bobcat. Once he gets enough rocks out, the water starts draining out. He lets it drain for about three days. Comes back three days later with a flashlight and a pressure washer. Washes all the dirt and mud out, starts cleaning the mine up. Uncovers this thing, goes, hey, that's a pretty cool looking hunk of junk. We're going to pressure wash it. Washed all the dirt and mud off, said, oops. Y'all reckon they had stainless steel air tools 100 some odd years ago? Which means that's not stainless, but under water for 85 years and pressure washed. It's gonna rust like crazy. Him and three buddies hopped in a Ford Ranger, drove to Ace Hardware, and come back with a 55 gallon drum, slap full of the best chemical mankind's ever put into a 55 gallon drum. Are you familiar with the compound water displacer recipe 40? WD-40? Yeah, 55 yeah. gallon drum, but him and four buddies went glug and dumped the whole thing on here and left it alone for three days. Got to figure, you know, there really ain't nothing wrong with it. No gripping, gaping holes, no missing parts, and nuts tightened down good, dude. You hear still loose. This thing will jigger. Here's still loose. What you said would go back to Ace Hardware, buy some airline, a pocket knife roll, a duct tape, rig it back together, turn a valve on. What's going to happen? 
Theory one, very unlikely, but technically possible. It could run. Theory two, it's 80 some odd years old, but the water for 80 some odd years. We went with compressed air, turn it on, it's gonna blow up on us. Either way, we get a cool story to tell. Let's do it. So they did. I'm serious, literal duct tape in the airline. Put the thing back up, turn the valve on, it ran. Like a brand new tool under water for 85 years. That was 30 some odd years ago, and it still works today as a 114 year old tool in 2018, which you don't see many of. So I'm going to fire it up, let y'all sit in here and run. Make a little bit of noise. You can cover your ears, you can't, but it's going to be that bad. I'm going to fire it up in about three, two, you go with the camera, give it a thumbs up, and you're ready. One, here we go. That's what I'm saying. Coolest thing I've seen in my life as far as I can't wait to hear. Cool, huh? Boom, me? Uh, all right, that's our last little stop we're supposed to make. We're looking at one more thing on the way out. If y'all have any questions, you're welcome to ask. We've got to do whatever I can, but whatever you ask. Can we go that way? Nick. <laughs> There's mud about yay deep over there, and you wearing some awful pretty shoes. I hate to get them real muddy. Not to mention the lights quit working in about 50 yards. But y'all done a little too far. Hold up, look at this. I want to show you something else. This little booger hanging off the wall here, that is an American Eastern brown bat. That is an endangered species. You may not get to see another one in your lifetime, but that's what they look like. That little booger there eats a thousand mosquitoes an hour. That time when flying around eating bugs, that's from about March to about October. October to March, they sleep here in the mines, stay somewhat warm, go out and eat mosquitoes again. And like I said, there's not many of them, so you might want to get a good look or a good photo while you can. It's alive? Oh yeah, watch this. See him wiggle? He's alive. He's cute. Yeah. Don't pet him. It's a dangerous species. You have to go to jail for it. I'm not going to pet him. <laughs> We've had people try, trust me. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't try. I just think he's cute, though. What's he no. hanging on to? The rock. What does he eat? Mosquitoes. That's what bats do. Did you not hear him? He's, he's, he's really alive, right? Yeah. His name is Bruce Wayne. He sleeps here all through the winter. Yeah. Is he here by himself? Yeah, as of now, yeah. Well, doesn't he get lonesome? <laughs> he don't wake up until about, um, about March. He's been asleep since October. He'll stay asleep until March. Oh, he's asleep? Yeah, he's asleep. Oh, yeah, I see his ass. At a certain time, of the life would solve it. Pretty cool, right? Get a good picture of him. Look this way. Did you get a good picture of him? He's probably. Don't take him with you for real. I get in trouble for that. Everybody's shining their lights in his eyes. Gonna wake him up. Yeah. Is that your fear to wake him up? I like that. Well, then. Is this another uh I've been here almost six years. That looks like it's another air pump here. Oh no, that's just that's just different color granite. Jerry hits in the earth, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you talking about a fantasy movie, I'm in a real gold mine. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs>
Yeah, that was a loading bay. They'd blow the rock there and then fall where we're standing now and then fall to the side of the loading bay tunnel. It's all something down there. It's hmm. sort of back door for the rock to be pushed into them. Okay. We right now have all our electrical stuff there, like our emergency phone and stuff like that. There's nothing to see back there, I promise. I'm from Tacoa. Close enough. The cardio of the day. Pass up on the back if you want to. Go on my yellow heart after like so, that's fine. Just load up here in this bin and come by. Have you said that? I'm begging you pretty please. Do not think you out of the mind safely. Throw your hat in the bin and slam your head on the door jam. Duck if you need to. Thank you for coming today and I truly hope you had a blast. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Hey, that's the best sign I've seen all day. See you. <laughs> so now that we're done mining, or not mining, but walking through the mines, we've got some uh, gems. What he said to do is take some dirt, put it down in here, put this back in here, and then take this, turn it sideways, bounce it up and down. That's it. Look at my gems, guys. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. This is what you call sifting.
have beat me in getting the biggest rock. <laughs> we got our rocks. Apparently, I have a really valuable, well, not valuable, but like precious gemstone in mine. He's got a whole shit ton of rocks. Oh my god. So, we're gonna go see how much it's gonna cost to get these cut and go from there. Thank you guys for watching. Constantly Gold Mines was actually really cool, and I got some pretty nice rocks, and I'm kind of happy I got that rare gemstone. So, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment of your favorite part, and if I should get, which one of these rocks I should get cut. I have sapphire, I have crystals, I have a garment, I believe it's what it's called. The garment stone is the one that is a super valuable gem. And I got some sapphire and a bunch of other stuff. So drop that like, please. Hit that notification bell because it's about to get some real serious out here, guys. Real serious. Until then, cue that outro.